If you are a student in Canada looking to extend your study permit, but you are not sure about what's the process, what are the documents required, what will be the fees and processing time for it, then this video is for you because in today's video, I'm going to share my laptop screen and explain you everything that you need to know in order to extend your study permit. So without wasting any further time, let's get started with this video. On your browser, you have to search Canada.ca and then you'll select English or French according to your language. If you scroll down a little bit below, it will give you this option of immigration and citizenship. Once you click on that, scroll down a little bit further. Here you will get an option to apply for a extend a study permit or student work permit. Once you click on that option, we scroll below here it says extend your study permit or restore your status and here you can see that it explains everything about the process when to apply how to apply it will cost you around 150 canadian dollar for extending your study permit and as of now june 2024 the processing time says for 54 days here also they have mentioned that you should at least apply for 30 days before your current study permit expires but it's always recommended to apply before at least two to three months just in case their processing time is increasing and if you scroll down below they have everything explained on this page they have different links for what you need to know before you follow the whole process which i'm going to show you i would definitely recommend you to verify all information and it can be changed over the period of time so now let's get into the how you can apply for study permit extension so first you need to log in your gc key account you can always go to this canada.ca website again and it will give you an option here with login with username and password here i will put my user id and password once you are successfully logged in into your gck account you have to scroll down below and go to this tab of apply to come to canada it will ask you do you have any reference code which you don't have in majority of the cases and you will see this thing here visit a visa study or work permit you have to click on that one and now they are going to check whether you are eligible to apply for the study permit extension or not. So they are going to ask you maybe a few questions and you have to, after filling all the details, they will give you an option. Okay, you are eligible for study permit extension. So I'll quickly fill up all the details and let you know. And then we'll go to next. Here it's asking that, do you have a provincial attachment letter? It is also known as PAL. So I would say no here because if you are in Canada, you really don't need this pal letter in order to extend your study permit i will explain it further and you click on next and it says do you qualify for an exception i will say yes here once you say yes which exception do you qualify for so here if you are already in canada and you have a valid study permit then you will select this option of i am an applicant applying within canada it's described under 215 one of immigration refugees and pro protection regulations. Then you click next. Here it's asking, are you a permanent resident of United States? And I'll just say no. What is your current immigration status? Student. What is your marital status? Let's say single here. What is your province or territory of destination? Suppose I'm in Ontario, select next. So here, based on the answers that you have given, it's saying that you are qualified for study permit in Canada, extending your study permit. Also, the another option is temporary resident visa, which is also known as TRV. So TRV is basically needed if you are going to leave Canada and you are going to come back, then you will need visa, of course, on your passport in order to enter country again. And in order to stay in Canada, you will need study permit. So once you have approval of your study permit, you can apply for TRV. But that I will cover in separate video. So we'll just say continue here. And you will say continue. Are you accompanying any family member? Just say no. Do you also want to apply for work permit? Depending upon whether your program has co-op or not, you'll say yes or no. But majority of the programs doesn't have co-op. So I will just select no. What does your status in Canada expire? So whatever is the expiry date on your study permit that you will put it here and you just select next you had a medical exam performed within last 12 months i'll say no and then it will ask you do you fall under any of this category for jobs 
so majority is the medical sector so if you are from that category you have to select yes otherwise you select no do you want to submit application for family member no are you giving someone access to your application i just say no if you are applying by yourself in the last 10 years have you given your fingerprints photo biometrics you will just select yes because you must have done that during the time when applying for Canadian student visa. There are fees associated with that application. Yes, I will be paying my fees. Are you able to make digital copy of your documents? Yes. I'm going to fee pay fees with this medium. Yes. And then in the end, it will give you option to review all of the questions. So make sure you are just going through all of the answers again. You can always edit them if you have made any mistake. And once you check that, just hit on continue. And now it will give you further steps what you need to do. And it will create an application process. So I'll just uh, tell you two things from here. You will have 60 days once you create this application to submit it successfully and upload all the documents and do the fees payment. Also, the another thing which you need to know is Whatever documents you are uploading, the maximum size will be up to 4 MBs. So if you have much longer size in PDF, you have to compress all the PDFs and then upload it. And let's say continue here. And then it will create your application. And now mainly the majority of the students get stuck to fill up this form. I will explain about it later on. Let's discuss few are the supporting documents required here first. LOA or letter of acceptance. So here you can always click on this question mark and it will give you what is exactly the documents and what they need in order to file your application. So LOA or letter of enrollment you can find always from the college that you are enrolling in in future. So you have to upload it here. Passport required. So passport you can see here what exactly they need. So mainly it should contain all the pages which are not blank. Your address, your name and your visa stamps. And after uh, creating all the pictures you have to combine them and create one single PDF to upload it here. The third thing is proof of means of financial support. So you can click here. Generally people recommend to upload at least three minimum. So the documents which I will try to upload is your bank statement of course of the last four months you can always get the four last month of your bank statement from any of the bank in which you have account uh, pay stubs you will have if you are working part-time anywhere just give pay stubs of last maybe two to three months and an employment letter so when i was applying for my study permit extension i just took a letter from my employer saying that okay i have been working here since last six months or the date when i started and i average work maybe 20 hours a week and in this pay i have been working and then the last one digital photo you must have a digital photo when you were initially applying for canadian student visa so you can just upload that one as well and if you want to click a new one then it should be matching this dimension or requirement and below here there are two optional documents it's not mandatory but it's up to you if you want to include some people i have seen they prefer to include a kind of SOP or a simple letter which explains why you want to extend your study permit. So you can just always say that, okay, I have been uh, studying this course and I'm planning to do this course in this college particularly. You can attach that PDF here as well. And then here in the last, you have to submit the payment $150 using your debit or credit card. So now let's talk about the toughest thing. Once you click on that link, it will direct you to this form. You just have to right click and to save link as and i'm just trying to save it on your i saved that form on my desktop and if you open it like this it wouldn't open so in order to open it you should have acrobat reader installed in in your desktop so it's here i just downloaded it and you don't have to pay for any extra version or any premium kind of thing so you have to right click here and then select open with Adobe Acrobat. So let's fill this form now. First, your UCI number from your study permit. It should be written on the top right side corner. I want service in. Let's select uh, English here. I'm applying for one or more of the following. Apply for study permit for the first time or extend my study permit. Full name, you just have to write the same name that you have on your passport. Have you ever used any other name? I'll just say no. And then you have to select your gender date of birth city 
or town and also the country and citizenship you can select based on your country and then current country or territory of resident so it's selected already canada here you will just select your status as a student and this from and to date should be the same matching what you have on your study permit so we'll just copy paste that date format here previously if you have been living in any other country then you just have to add that one here and then you select your marital status here and you might have to fill in more details here if you are married and then you go to this personal details have you previously been married or in a common law relationship just select no then you have to select your language here so i'll just select gujarati in this one are you able to communicate in english or french i'll just say english have you taken a test from a designated testing agency to access your proficiency in english so i have done ilts so i'll just select yes you have to write your passport number country or territory of issue issue date and passport expiry date pretty easy for this trip will you use passport issued by ministry of foreign affairs in taiwan i will just select no and no here and then it's a national identity document do you have a national identity document i will just select yes and i can always provide my other car or driving license any other document apart from passport so i can write down the number here and the country here and if it has any issue date or expiry date i can also write it here uspr card i will just select no here is the main important thing current mailing address you have to be very careful when you are filling this part because your physical paper of study permit is going to deliver on this address so suppose you are moving after a few days then maybe try to put your new address here or the address of your any close relatives who are living in canada so your study permit physical paper wouldn't get missed so you have to write apartment number po box if you have any street number and street name city province and postal code of course and you can always just say same residential address same as mailing address your phone number your email address pretty easy here is the another important thing coming into canada date and place of your original entry to canada so you can just put that date here and place you can just put the airport name and then the original purpose for coming to canada will be study date or place of your most recent entry to canada so due to some reason you visited another country and then you are coming back then you should have that date here if applicable provide the document number most recent visited record issued to you if you want you can put on your study permit or the latest record here but it's not mandatory so you can skip it as well details of intended study in canada so this here you are going to fill in the information of the course which you are going to take it now so not the course that you are about to finish the first year course you are going to provide the details of the second year course on based to what you are going to extend your study permit so name of the school in whichever you are going to study level of study based on from this criteria field of study they have particular fields if it doesn't match any of the given option you can always select other option here province city address you can always get all this details from the offer letter or loi dli number majority of the colleges provide it on your offer letter as well but if you don't have it i will put a link in the description below where you can check your dli number here student id duration of expected study the cost of my studies here you have to put the gross tuition fees for a year room and board so some, whatever your rent and groceries are just put a common amount here other if you like to add something more here funds available for my stay so it's always recommended to have some of the funds in your bank account because that's the way that you are going to prove that you have sufficient funds that you are going to be in canada for that period of time so here you will put whatever the money you you have in bank account and some people also put the tuition fees that they are going to pay for the first year so suppose the tuition fees is $9000 or $10000 for the semester then you can always include that amount as well and then here you will select the option who is going to pay for your expense in addition to study permit are you also applying for work permit if you have a co-op then you will select yes just select no as of now here it asks for your education so whatever education that you have already completed 
you will write the highest level of it so in my case i've done suppose bachelor's in india i'll just fill in the all details for my bachelor's study here and then the another tab here is for employment you will fill in all the details about your job and if you scroll down below they have few more questions majority of the cases it will be no but you can always read within past two years if you remember i'll just say no do you have any physical mental disorder nope have you ever remained beyond the validity of your status no my study permit is still valid have you ever been refused a visa or permit deny entry or order to leave canada or any other country or territory so if your visa has been refused originally when you are applying for canada and then you got approval still you will select yes have you previously applied to enter or remain in canada yes you have applied for study permit and student visa that's why you are in canada and here it says if you answered yes to question please provide details then you can mention your study visa was refused originally when you applied for the first time and second time you got approval or whatever the description you want to put in have you ever committed been arrested no nope. did do you serve in military no nope. have you ever been a member or associated with any political party no nope. have you ever witnessed participated in no nope. do you consent to be contracted by cic or any organization that has a request in future to select yes and here you can just write down your name and the date when you are going to submit this document and then you will of course click on validate again so that way you will know if you have missed any important column once you are all done filling out that form you can save that form and upload it here and also you will upload the remaining documents which we already talked about previously and then you can proceed to this fees payment of 150 dollar and your application will be successfully proceeded you can always log in into your gck account and check your status of application on time to time basis if you need help with your study permit application then you can always dm me on instagram or email me in the email id below i can always refer you to some good agents who are helping a lot of student in this application process with very reasonable rate of charge and if you are doing your first course and looking to do second course in any different college or universities feel free to go through the website mentioned in the description below and we can help you to get into your desired college and universities without charging any consultation fees at all so that's all for today's video and i'll see you in the next vlog